the virus received the items. All is good. Feedback received. We're good to go. Time to release this video on the greatest find I've ever found on the largest sale I've ever had on eBay. What did I find that might be worth a lot that I didn't even know when I bought them? Hi everyone, I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. Boy, do I have a story to tell you. And it's a once in a lifetime story, something that I am 100,000% positive will never happen again. This video is about the largest sale that I've ever had on eBay. And I'm going to tell you the whole story behind it. So find a comfy chair, get your favorite beverage, because I'm going to tell you a story. The whole story, nothing but the story, in great detail. It was an ordinary Saturday of sourcing, and I found two things that turned out to be the highest sale that I've ever had on eBay. I'm going to take you back to that Saturday and share with you a little bit of the shopping that day, and then I'll be back to tell you more of the story. Good morning. Hi everyone. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. It's Saturday and Mark and I are going sourcing two neighborhood sales in Gray, Tennessee. We might have been to one of them before, but I have to get out of the house. I spent all week listing. Mark did the photography and I did the listing and the packing and the shipping and I just got to get out. So come with me on this Saturday. Let's go sourcing. See if we can find some things to resell on eBay. Let's get started. Getting closer to the next sale, neighborhood sale. It's really pretty in here, lots of trees, beautiful day, just a slight chill in the air. What do you think it is today, Mark? About 68 degrees? Something like that. Yeah. I don't know if this is a newer neighborhood or older. We will find out. It's a good thing we have more than one neighborhood today because this one, well, a lot of the sales are closed up compared to last year, but I've got one right over here. Let's go check it out. I don't know if I can video. It's kind of hard to do when there's a lot of people around. I see a small sale there and a couple more down the street. World sale, that away. Looks like mostly kids stuff there. We'll see. Mostly kids stuff, toys, kind of like what I expected. So, you know, some of the sales have closed up. They're supposed to be open until three and it's uh, a little after one and that's what happens. So we'll keep looking. There's another one open might have some promise. Check it out. We see another yard sale sign. So we're going to go left and see if there's really a yard sale there. And guess what? There is a yard sale here. Let's go check it out. Well, believe it or not, I found two items there. Heading to the next gray neighborhood in Tennessee. Look at that barn over there. Oh, Wait a minute. Sure, Garage sale sign. Late. Two of them. We need to break for this. Pepper shakers. Okay. Crazy. Crazy cute. Crazy cute. Crazy cute. Crazy cute. Crazy cute. Alright, I gotta go through this stack. Right, right. Do you see what I see? I see little figurines. All kinds of cool stuff at this garage sale. And I have a whole bunch of them. <laughs> cool. We spent $60 at that last sale. Yes, we did. Salt and pepper shakers, small figurines, a lot of Japan pieces, and some other things that I have to show you that I'm not gonna tell you right now what we got. Disclosure, for the sake of privacy, I'm not disclosing the address and I'm not disclosing her real name. 
I will refer to her as K. I'll call her K. And through our chatting back and forth at the garage sale as I was picking out things, I learned, we learned, Mark and I learned, that her basement was set up with tables full of items from an estate sale that she had had many years prior, an estate sale from the last of her mom's items. Her mom and dad were dealers, vintage and antique dealers. And so since they had a business and her mom had moved in with her, she inherited a lot of things. And she had had an estate sale, her own estate sale in her home, in her basement, and she never took it down. She just left everything up. And things were just still set up in her basement. She was selling from it on occasion at little local sales. But throughout our chatting, throughout our conversation at the garage sale, as I said, this was mentioned. And I asked, could we see it? And she said, sure. So her friend that was helping her at the garage sale took us downstairs and we only had five minutes, barely five minutes. Her friend took us down there are big sheets of plastic all over the tables and she's uncovering them. And we're like ping pong balls, ping, 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 trying to see everything as fast as we could. And as soon as we were past the table, she was covering it back up again. So we got really, I think five minutes, five minutes to take a sneak peek. It was just a tease. Anyway, we went back upstairs to the garage sale and Kay said, did you find anything? I said, kind of interested in those green jadeite bowls that you have. How much would you like for them? She thought about it for a minute and then she said, oh wait, I'll tell you that later in the video, how much I paid for them. Before we left the garage sale, we exchanged phone numbers. Kay invited us back for a future garage sale and she invited us back for a private appointment to look at the things when we had more time. But back to our day of Saturday sourcing. This is the first thing that I bought today, the stack of Home Co. Sirocco, you know, hard plastic little kitchen plaques. We have mushrooms and corn and a red pepper, tomatoes, celery, asparagus, and, and why they put a lobster with this, I have no idea. I paid $3 and they sold for $14.95. So do you sell pottery? It's not a crock. Trust me, it will sell. Even though there's no markings on the bottom, these are silver plated candle holders. Which one do you think was free. The vintage iron with the red enamel or the pie iron with red enamel. My dear husband Mark found this deer at a garage sale. Here's another little simple item it, and I did see on the back that it says made in Germany but I don't know if you'll be able to make that out. Utensil holder. Pretty simple, pretty plain. I know that simple sells for good profit. I say it and I believe it. And I think my sales prove it. And here are the finds from Kay's garage sale. Fisher Price little Snoopy pool toy. It was made in 1965. How do I know that? Because the information is right here, made in USA. Do you ever pick up baskets to resell? I have one basket that is signed and one is not signed. But they're both obviously handmade and you can see how gorgeous they are. They're in excellent condition. Paid only $1 each. I have a whole bag of small fragile items to show you. So give me a minute here. I'll do some fast forwarding and I'll set it all up and show you what I've got. And the find of the day, what you've been waiting for in this video. What did I find that might be worth a lot that I didn't even know when I bought them? These. What do I have here? I have a jadeite mixing bowl. And it does say Fire King. Can I get it to show up? There, Fire King. You can just barely see it. And these. Honestly, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Look at the coloring on here. These are Fire King. I'm trying to get it to show up for you there. Can you see the Fire King right there in the center? And I found out, seriously, after I got home, I found out that these are very, very rare. In fact, someone on eBay 
has just this bowl with the original sticker. I don't have the original sticker. I don't know why you would need the original sticker when it has the writing on the bottom, but she has it at $600. These are nesting bowls, and maybe there were other sizes too, I don't know. eBay only has the one that's listed for $600. So I'm not quite sure what to do with these. I don't know if I should list them on auction or buy it now. Not really sure. But did I tell you what I paid for these? I paid $20 for all three pieces. I asked her what she would like for them. She said $20 and I said yes. This Fire King Jadeite piece is a batter bowl and it'll probably get listed for around $59.95. And I'm just not sure yet on these. Could be several hundred dollars. Have you ever seen this before with the red flowers? Let me know, leave a comment. Definitely the find of the day or the week or the month. Hmm, should we go back and look at the rest of her things? Wow, who wouldn't, right? What an opportunity. A private appointment to look at everything she still has for sale. Now mind you, she already had an estate sale, so people have gone through it already, so all the good stuff could be gone. But then I buy things that other people don't. So that really didn't worry me too much. What I was really concerned about is that I would want to buy everything and I most certainly don't have room for everything and I'm sure I could not afford everything. And so that was my real concern. I mean, I had a nervous stomach over this, you know, should I call her or not? Several days went by and I picked up the phone and I called Kay. And I said, Kay, we would like to make an appointment to come see you. You know, is Wednesday good for you? She said, sure, come on down. And then I decided to disclose to her at that point that we were resellers, that we resell on eBay. I also explained to her that we would want to take our time and really look at things, do some research, you know, that we, we might need quite a bit of time to look things over because she has so much and we just wanted to make sure we were making good decisions. And she said, sure, no problem. I'm retired, I'll be home. And then I disclosed to her that I have a YouTube channel and I asked permission to video. She goes, oh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure. And I thought, okay, you know, that's fine. You know, I understand. Um, but, you know, we set up the appointment. Ironically, a few days later, we went to a sale and Kay and her friend were set up at the sale selling some things from her basement. We were so surprised to see her. Didn't expect that. And I had an opportunity to say to her and explain to her that when I asked if I could video at the sale, I would absolutely maintain her privacy. I would never give out her information as to where she lives or her name or anything. And she could choose to be in the video or not in the video. She chose not to, but that I would keep everything private. I just wanted to video what we were looking at so that I could share it with you. I said, just think about it. No pressure. Just think about it. I bought a few more things from her at that little sale and then anxiously awaited our Wednesday appointment. Ah, the day is here. It's Wednesday. We set aside the day and anxious to go to our appointment. We gathered up a light because I knew the lighting wasn't real good there. We, we grabbed flashlights, notepad, pen, our phones, of course, our comfy shoes, and on our way we went. Kay was so gracious. She invited us in and gave us a tour of her beautiful home which is filled with vintage and antiques and collectibles, absolutely gorgeous. And she was so welcoming, so kind, so friendly. Just love her, really. She's just a sweetheart. And we had a good time chatting with her. And then we finally went down to the basement and we had it all to ourselves. Kay parked herself over on one of her sofas down there. And Mark and I set up our lighting and a table that we took with us. And we got started. And we went from table to table to table. And as it was, we spent four hours there, four hours. And while we were looking and shopping and checking, Kay had friends stop over and visit with her. And uh, yeah, we just shopped and researched and set things over on a table. And I wrote everything down on my tablet, what it was, a, just a brief description of it and what we agreed to on the price. And then when we were good with everything, Kay and her friends wrapped everything up for us. And we took quite a few banker boxes with us um, to pack things in, but she had packing paper and they just took care of it while we kept on shopping. It ended up that day when it was all said and done. 
that we spent over $200 and came home with six boxes of things to resell on eBay. But I know, I know, you want to get back to this video. So now that you've seen the bowls and what we found and what we paid, I'm going to tell you about the listing on eBay. The first thing I did, of course, was research. I found one bowl on eBay for $600. One bowl. I couldn't find any on Google when I was shopping, so I thought, oh my gosh, we have something pretty special here, pretty unique, pretty rare. This is one time when the word rare applies, and I put it in the title. I had it up for auction for seven days. Lots of viewers, but no bites. Didn't sell. And I decided on fixed rate I was going to bump the price up to $1,195. Yes, I did because I had make offer on it, right? Got a lot of room for offers. And I got offers. And I'm going to go through them and tell you why I decided not to accept the offer. Why would I accept less than what the one bowl is listed for on eBay? No thanks. I'll pass. And then I got an offer for $600. I countered, but they didn't bite. And that was fine. And then I got an offer for $700. All right, it's coming up a little bit, but not quite there. I countered, they passed, that's fine. Not a bad offer, but I've been checking the buyer's feedback. Of course, they have 100% positive feedback. All buyers have 100% positive feedback. I was looking at how much feedback they have. And this person didn't have much. I think 26 or 28 feedback and they never left a single feedback for anyone they bought from. I told myself, not my buyer. And that's what I do sometimes. I am not afraid to say, this person is not my buyer. I'm going to hold out. I'm going to wait. And that's what I did. Whew, $800, $800. We're kind of talking now, right? $800, how do you turn down $800 for something that you paid $15 for, well, you know, there's fees, eBay fees, fees on the item, fees on sales tax, fee, fees on the shipping. Nope, I countered, I countered at 1,000. That's what I want for these bowls, 1,000. They came up to 900, not bad, right? It's almost my thousand, not bad. But I decided to counter again. Yes, I did at 1,000. And they declined my counter. I'm like, what? Surely they want these bowls, right? Why would they decline? Why didn't they counter back? At least at 950, why didn't they counter back? So you know what I did? I ran to my laptop, practically ran to it, and I decided to send out an offer to the 28 people watching these Jadeite Fire King bowls. And I sent an offer, knowing that this person would probably get it too, that just declined my counter, I sent an offer of $999.95 with fingers crossed. Within about 10 minutes, we got a counter offer for $950. My first thought was, is it the same buyer that just declined my counter of $1,000? Ran to the computer again, took a look, and yes, it was the same buyer. She came back at $950. All right, I think I found my buyer, finally. I have this rare two-piece lot of Fire King Jadeite bowls that I've been showing you here in this video. I've been holding out for $1,000, and although I did not reach $1,000, this buyer that I've been going back and forth with for the last hour, who declined my offer of $1,000, has now come back at $950. Do you think I should take it? Should yes! <laughs> Mark says yes. I'm going to shake the phone. All right, let me find my cursor and make sure I'm not going to counter offer it. I'm not going to decline it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to pay fees out of this, you know. It's going to cost a pretty penny. But I'm going to accept the offer. Love that sound. Mark got it on his phone here. My balls sold for $950. Woohoo! My biggest sale ever. Oh, it disappeared. <laughs> My largest sale ever on eBay. Woohoo! Woo! -hoo! Definitely the find of the day. Or the week. Or the month. For those who are interested, keep watching. 
Let's pack these $950 bowls. I'll show you how I did it. It's time to get the bowls packed carefully. Get them to the post office. I'm adding insurance. And am I nervous? Of course I am. They're $950 bowls. I did prep my boxes to save some time, but I'll show you how I'm going to pack these so they'll arrive safely. I also am adding a note on the outside of the box that says, let the package come to room temperature before opening. Those sudden temperature changes of hot to cold, you know, sitting out on a hot porch to the air conditioning can cause things to break and vice versa, winter time to the heat. So I've been adding a label to my packages that include glass or ceramic items, and you might want to do that too. But let me show you how I'm going to pack them. Sold for $950 plus shipping plus sales tax came to $1,025.55 minus fees. <laughs> of course, what a great sale. I'm going to be using two eBay boxes that are 8 by 8 by 8 one for each bowl. And I've cut them down. You can see here, I've cut this one down to about 5 and a half inches high. And this one, which I've already assembled, has been cut down to six inches high. I'm going to be double boxing, but actually it's going to take three boxes. Each ball is going in its own box, then I'm putting those two boxes into another box. I'm going to pack the larger bowl first. And I can tell you, it's barely going to make it. There's not a lot of room for packing material. I might even turn it upside down. But the first thing I want to do is protect the finish. But for that, I'm going to start with some tissue paper. I'm also going to add a layer of packing paper, tucking this inside. And you can see I still have a hollow area here. I need to fill that in. And I'm going to use some bubble wrap. You can see it's taking about three pieces. And then I need to bubble wrap the entire bowl. Let's see if two pieces will reach. Yes, it will. As I typically do, I'm going to cross lay the bubble wrap. And I'm using masking tape from my fancy dispenser. You can find all my regular packing supplies in the description below this video. When you purchase from those links, it helps out my channel. And thank you for that. I'm hoping this fits back into the box after I've added all this bulk. We'll find out, won't we? Let's check it right now. Yes, I'm going to be able to make it in there. I'm going to keep adding some tape. And I think I'm going to try turning it upside down in here. This is why. If, if I turn it upright, I can't really pack more material around the um, narrow area here. If I turn it upside down, I can pack more material. So let's see. Is it going to fit? Yes, it does. Fits good. I'm going to put a thank you label inside here. Run these 30 up on a sheet of labels. Just says thank you. Shop again soon. Avante Avenue. Let's check this flap. Pretty good. I'm going to take another piece of bubble wrap and just cut it into smaller pieces. And this is pretty crappy bubble wrap here. This is not what I'm recommending you buy in my links. This is the old bubble wrap. My new bubble wrap hasn't come in yet. Can't wait. It's due any day, but I didn't make it in time for this. Anyway, I'm going to take these little scraps and tuck them around. I mean, this bowl's not going anywhere. It's not going to move, but I'm still tucking some bubble wrap around the four sides like so. Let's get this taped up. Have a second dispenser, heavy duty industrial dispenser, and it's the only tape I use. And I'm not sponsored, but I do have links down below. That was pretty easy, right? This, this box is six inches high. This is the larger bowl, and this box will be for the smaller bowl. Okay, let's set this aside. Smaller bowl. I'm gonna miss these bowls on my shelf, and I know the money will be spent again all too fast because that's what resellers do. We reinvest, but it is going in the savings account initially. Tissue paper, packing paper. Smaller bowl, I filled it up a little more. But still adding some bubble wrap. 
pieces of bubble wrap one direction, two pieces the other direction. Same thing. I'm going to fold it up. Here's the box. I'm going to turn it upside down again. And we have some room to fill in around it. I'm going to put another thank you label on here. I'm going to cut these in half. Just fold these in half. Tuck it around. And another piece on top because there's room. It's not going anywhere. Okay, now what am I going to do with these two boxes so that they're not oversized in the final box? I'll show you here. This is a 12 by 12 by 12 eBay box. I've lined the bottom with a couple of pieces of bubble wrap. I allowed for that when I did my measurements. And you can see I have the perimeter filled with these air pillows. These are also in the description below if you'd like to order these air pillows. I'm putting the larger bowl in first, like so. And then the smaller box. You can see it's just making it. And I'm going to continue filling around with more air pillows. This is still shifting. It needs more packing. I'm going to stuff some extra bubble wrap down in. Whatever it takes to tighten things up. I don't want to break my air bubbles. That would defeat the purpose. But I want things to not move. That looks pretty good. I know it's a tight fit. The buyer did pay the shipping and I allowed plenty to help cover for this extra weight. It was calculated shipping. It's good to go. Press your tape down. And of course, I always tape the side seam. So we're gonna add some tape here. And by golly, I think we've got it. And the balls are ready to go. Give them a hug. Love you. Have a safe trip and enjoy your new home. If you'd like, keep watching. There's more to my story. I'm going to share some more thoughts and wrap this up. The book that I ordered, Kitchen and Glassware of the Depression Years, written by Jean and Kathy Florence, came in on the same day that I sold the Fire King Jadeite bowls. Let's take a look in here and see if we can find them. We're on page 77 and there you go. Here are the bowls that I just sold on eBay. Couldn't find much on them anywhere else, but they're in this book. Let's take a look at the value. The copyright on this book is dated 2001. In 2001, this Hawking Jadeite 7.5 inch 2 quart decorated bowl was valued at $300 to $350. And number five, the smaller bowl, six and a half inch bowl decorated one quart is valued at 400 to 450. Let's add the two highest values of 350 and 450 and we have a value of $800. Were the bowls worth more than the $950 that I sold them for? I'll never really know, but I am happy with the sale. Who wouldn't be $15 to 950? Kay really didn't inquire about my YouTube channel. She didn't really inquire about our store name. So I don't know if she'll see this video. But Kay, if you are watching the video, I hope you're not upset with me. I hope you will understand that I did not know the value of those bowls when I bought them. And yes, it was very difficult to have that knowledge when we came back to shop some more. I'm a very open person. If I'd been put on the spot, I would have told you. And maybe you would have kicked us out of your house that day and said, no more shopping for you. But with that said, I feel like I do owe you in some way. And other than saying thank you so much for your gracious invitation to come shop your sale and an invitation to shop again, I will offer this. If you have any desire to start on eBay and sell those items that you still have left from your parents' estate, I will gladly, full-heartedly give you my time and attention to teach you the ropes and be there to answer your questions along the way. So that is probably the most that I can do in this situation is to extend that to you and actually encourage you to check out selling on eBay even though, oh gosh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to sell on eBay. But if you so choose, just know you've got my phone number. You can call me at any time 
and I will give you some one-on-one -on -one training and be there, as I said, to answer your questions if you choose to sell on eBay. And thank you. Thank you very much. Do you remember earlier in the video when I said this? Honestly, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Look at the coloring on here. My buyer said, thank you, they are gorgeous. I think it's safe to say I found my buyer. If you've enjoyed this video and my story of my largest sale ever on eBay of the Jadeite Fire King Bowls, I appreciate a thumbs up. I invite you to like, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell icon so you receive notifications and never miss any of my videos. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. I'll see you soon. Simple sales for good profit.